Lesson 11, using functions and procedures. Python programmers often have to write large, complex programs. To make this manageable, these programs are divided into smaller programs that perform particular tasks. These are called subroutines. There are two types of subroutines. Let's look at simple functions first. We let Python know we're using a function by using def, D-E-F, which means define. We're defining the function add numbers in this case. We've called the function add, add numbers. And we have two parameters, x and y, for this particular function. Uh, parameters are like variables, and we use them to notify the program. We're using these numbers, these parameters, for our function. So we have x and y there, and we're going to return, in other words, return to the main program x plus y. So what this small function does, this two-line function, is to add x and y together. When we run the main program, you can see z equals add numbers. Add numbers is the function, and we're calling the function when we get to the main program. It's called calling, and we have two uh, comma two in brackets. So we're saying the values or the arguments for this particular function, the uh, values we're going to use are two and two. So when we run the program, what it should do is add those two numbers together, and then we're going to add finally we're going to print z, which will be those two numbers added together. Let's see if it works. As you can see here, it's returned the value four, which means the function has worked. We can change the numbers here. So if we try, for example, nine, and we try uh, eight, and we run the function again, this time we'll get 17. So as we just saw, functions return a value to the main program, procedures don't. So let's look at a simple procedure. In this case, the procedure is called count, and we're defining it here and there are no parameters. So if we say for x in range one to 11 there, print x, it will print from one uh, to 10. And we don't actually have anything happen until we actually uh, call the procedure. So count is the name of the procedure. So we call it, we open the brackets, we close the brackets and that will run the procedure. So let's just try this. And as you can see, the procedure produces numbers one to 10. In a previous lesson, we saw the CSV module in action, and uh, there are lots of modules which can be used, and there are types of procedures that are used in Python. Let's have a look at some now. So here's a module called random, and what it does, it lets us use a random number. So here, for example, we're importing it first of all, and we're saying print throw the dice. Once we've said that, we can then say the variable dice throw is equal to uh, the random dot randint and it's looking for a random number between one and six so it's like a dice basically so it will throw a one two three four five or six and then here we have a final print statement telling us what we've actually thrown so if we run the program in this case we've thrown a two uh, if we were to run the program again this time we've thrown a one so basically this module can be used for a dice. You could do it to throw, to actually toss a coin and you could have it, have a random number between one and a hundred. It's a very versatile module that can be used in lots of different programs. Let's quickly take a closer look at arguments and parameters. Here we have a procedure called info with two parameters, X and Y. The arguments in this case are thread and blogs. And as you can see, the first two lines of code are the actual procedure. The other three lines of code are the main program. So what will happen is that the procedure is written, but it won't actually be called until the third line of the main program, in which case the procedure is called and the arguments are then used in the procedure. Let's run it to see what happens. And as you can see here, we get the output there, details, thread blocks. Now let's look at a function here with two parameters. In this case, we have cost and payment. And this program basically calculates the change a customer would receive. So change equals payment, take away the cost. And it returns the value change to the main program. The main program here asks you uh, to enter the cost, enter the, the payment made, and then the change needed uh, can then be calculated by calling the function 
and then uh, the uh, arguments are used that have been entered from item cost and payment made and these are entered into the the function there and it will then give you the correct change let's run the program to see what happens so it's now asking me to enter a cost of the item let's say 20 pounds it will then ask me to enter the customer payment uh, which is say 30 pounds and it says the change given is 10 pounds so in this case what's happened is that as you can see here we have uh, a function uh, which is here uh, and the function basically is called change and we've actually used the arguments from uh, the inputs here and then we've used them to actually calculate within the function what the change is and then that's returned back to the main program as you can see sometimes variables are used within these functions and procedures if they use only in the functions and procedures they're called local variables and if you try to use them outside the functional procedure they just won't work so there are other types of variables called global variables and these variables are designed to work within the functional procedure and within the whole program let's take a closer look as you can see here the global variable is called x and if we write the word global before it it lets us know that the variable will work within the uh, procedure or function and outside of the procedure or function so in this case the procedure just prints hello world if we then call the function test open brackets close brackets calls the function you can then print x which is hello world and because it's a global variable it knows what x is and it will allow you to print it outside of the procedure let's have a go and there it is hello world twice once from within the procedure and once outside of the procedure let's see what happens when we remove the line global x so we just remove that line there and then run the program again as you can see this time you get an error message uh, it will not run the uh, program as it says x is not defined it does not recognize x outside of the procedure 